my channel welcome back to another video i'm messy jesse and you're watching coming at you now with another bookish tag now my last video was a tag video and i enjoyed it so much i figured i would upload another one i really do enjoy bookish tags and i would really like to do them more often on this channel so if you have recommendations for any tags that you would like to see me do please leave them in the comment section down below and i will leave the playlist of the tags that i have done either up here or in the description box so today we are going to be doing the 20 questions tag i'm very excited about this because i hadn't known about it previously until I watched one of Max's videos. Max is absolutely wonderful. He discusses a lot of fantasy on his channel, which I will leave linked down below. Without any further ado, I wanna jump right into these questions. I'm very, very excited about them. The first question is a, is a little controversial. We're starting off hot. The first question is, how many books is too many books in a series? Whew. A question that Robert Jordan should have asked himself when he started the Wheel of Time series. In all seriousness, as long as you continue to have a compelling narrative to tell, as long as the story is not finished, right? If you're, if the world that you have created and the plot that we are following has become so immense that it warrants 10 books, 9 books, 14 books, I think that, that is perfectly acceptable as long as you are still producing a quality story why the heck not right this the amount of books in a series is not going to deter me from reading the series and i'm i've never in my life actually said okay that's too many damn books now we're talking about quality writing right a great example of this is jk rowling she who will not be named but in this opinion is not because of my dislike for her politics, but simply for quality of writing. I genuinely think we were better off if she had just finished the Harry Potter series and left it alone. We didn't need that cursed child screenplay. That screenplay was the curse. Fantastic Beasts never should have happened. Okay, if you wanted to build up House Hufflepuff, you should have done that in your books. Moving on. Question number two is how do you feel about cliffhangers? This is going to be an unpopular opinion. I love cliffhangers. I want a cliffhanger, especially if we're talking about a series. Heck yeah, you better end that with a cliffhanger. You better make me excited for book two. Because there's such a great volume of books coming out. And it is so easy to um, fail to pick up a sequel and to let a book slide by the wayside in the midst of everything else that is being released, yeah? So I personally like cliffhangers. A lot of folks who complain about cliffhangers in series. Don't complain about that cliffhanger, but you still gonna pick up book two. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Also enjoy cliffhangers in my standalones. I like being left hanging. It's, I mean, it's how my love life goes. So why wouldn't I enjoy that in my books? Question number three is hardcover or paperback? Aesthetic purposes, hardcover, you know, display, book photography pur purposes, hardcover. But I've always loved paperbacks. I love the flop. I want my books to basically be a floppy disk. Question number four is favorite book. And I'm going to give two answers for this, but it's going to make sense. So my number one official favorite book of all time is White Oleander by Janet Fitch. That has been my favorite book since I was 14 years old. It changed my life. It impacted me so heavily. I have read it a disgusting amount of times. In I read Freshwater by a Quake AMZ when it was first released. I still can't even talk about this book. So oftentimes you'll hear me say one of those two things are my favorite book. I'll either say White Oleander or Freshwater. And both of those are completely true. Freshwater is me in my adulthood. And White Oleander was what I connected with as a child. Those were two very different people. And so at one point, I would really like to read both of those books back to back and see which is my official favorite of all time. I'm very inclined to say that it is going to be Freshwater. I do think that the writing is superior. And of course, the non-binary representation really speaks to me, as well as some other... T I'm going to stop talking because I'm just going to go on and on about it. Question number five, ask for your least favorite book. The... First thing that's going to come to mind is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I'm not going to talk about my issues with The Goldfinch here. I will leave the video 
where I talk about that down below with a timestamp because I featured it in one of my books that wasted my time videos where I complain about all of the books that ruined my life and not in a good way. I also have an entire highlight on my Instagram page called Awful Books where I give screenshots and go into lengthy detail about why the goldfinch is racist and xenophobic and just... <sighs> I know a lot of people love the goldfinch, so much so that a lot of people very conveniently ignore or pretend not to know about the criticisms for that book. I do ask people to educate themselves on the criticisms for the goldfinch and to at least mention those criticisms when you're going to recommend that book. Like I think that that's a book that needs to be recommended responsibly because out of every single book that I've ever read, including hyper racist classics, that book was the one that traumatized me the most real talk, like actually legitimately triggered me. That is my least favorite book. And I think also what makes it my least is that it's so beloved and recommended. And the people who are shouting about it from the rooftop, some of which are people of color, never talk about the issues that exist within that book. And it's just like further traumatizing, but read what you want. Question number six is love triangles, yes or no? I don't want love at all. I want action, blood and gore. Question number seven is the most recent book that you just couldn't finish. None of the books that I have recently been unable to finish have been because of the book itself. So I'm going to skip this question. The next question is a book that you are currently reading and literally five minutes before I started filming this video, I finished If I Had Your Face. I believe this is by Frances Cha. And this book rocked my world, it rocked my socks, it rocked my edges. This book shook me all night long. It is a contemporary where we are following four women in South Korea in Seoul. Cosmetic surgery is a huge theme in the book and it deals a lot with the Korean standard of beauty and the beauty standards that Korean women are put under. It talks about things like sex work and miscarriage and bullying and one of the characters is mute. It also has somewhat of a Mean Girls vibe. It kind of rides that border between contemporary and literary that I really appreciated. It is just, it is such a good book. I learned a lot. I was entertained. The writing was really beautiful without being ridiculously prosy. Very much recommend this book. The next question is the oldest book you have read. And this is by publication date. Okay, and I don't know this off this answer off the top of my head, but it is most likely going to be a poetry collection. So I did have the misfortune of being forced to read Huckleberry Finn in high school. So, and I don't know what year that that came out. Question 11 is the newest book that you have read by publication date. Man, what was that book called? It's freaking read it. Oh man. There's another one. It was a con Sunny Song. There we go. Sunny Song will never be famous. We're doing great, Jesse. We're doing, we're doing fabulous. Sunny Song is actually released June 1st of 2021. So does that count? I don't know. Let's just go with that because I'm clearly fighting for my life right now. Question number 12 is favorite author. I'm going to ask y'all to pause it. If you know me, comment down below who you think my favorite author is. Y'all better not get this wrong. My favorite author is a quick AMSZ, period. From now until the end of time. Question number 13 is buying books or borrowing books? Yo, why can't we do both? I just borrowed Untamed by I believe Glenn Doyle from one of my best friends. And I am a huge, huge user of my local library. I frequently check out children's picture books. Love my library. I actually have a bookshelf back there of the like rotating library books that I keep. And supporting my like my local library is very important. And I also, I just, I love borrowing books. I actually very rarely buy books. 95% of the books that I'm reading were sent to me either by the publisher or by one of y'all. Question number 14 is a book that you dislike that everyone else seems to love. Can I just say The Goldfinch? Because that is the perfect response to this freaking question. Question number 15 is bookmarks or dog ears? Neither. I have a collection of bookmarks. I love bookmarks. I rarely ever throw them away. This NB is not responsible enough to take a bookmark and delicately place it where it needs to go in, in the book, okay? And I also don't dog ear pages, not because I find it scandalous, but I just, I just don't do it. Fun fact, I can always remember what page that I'm on. And also if I do really want to hold my place, I will use a marker, a pen tab, 
I, my cell phone. Question number 16 is a book you can always reread. I'm going to refrain from using White Oleander and Fresh Water. I'm gonna pick a few here. The Poppy War, which I think about rereading daily. Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifueco, which I will be rereading in anticipation of the sequel, Redemptor, which is coming out this year. Monstrous by Marjorie Liu. This is one of my favorite graphic novels of all times. I have reread this series three times. Oh, and The Collected Schizophrenia by Esme Wong. That book changed my life. Question number 17 is, can you read while listening to music? Oh boy, can I. I can absolutely read while listening to music. I can read while listening to like rain sounds, listening to jazz, hip hop beats. Yeah, background noise does not bug me while I'm reading. Question number 18, one POV or multiple POVs? I like a good multi POV, so long as all of the voices are developed, they feel separate and distinct. Question number 19 is, do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? It usually takes me two days to finish a book. Two days to finish a book that's under 300 pages or is 300 pages. And if it's over that, it'll take me anywhere from five days to a week. So both. And the final question, question number 20 is, whom do you tag? I, of course, am going to tag Starla of Starla Reads. I'm going to tag Alexandra, Gabby, and Mel. I will leave all of their channels linked down below so that you can check out those incredible creators if you are not already following them. That's gonna do it for this video. If you would like more content from me, you can follow me on my Instagram, which is Bowties and Books, but all of my social media links will be in the description box below. Stay safe, wear a mask, and I'll see you in my next video. Please tell me that my septum piercing was not crooked that entire video. I have a feeling that it was. I hate racism.